in this lesson, we want to discuss how to solve more advanced absolute value inequalities. So over the course of the last few lessons, we've discussed some methods that can be used to solve some more advanced absolute value equations. Now, again, we're just going to go one step further and think about how to apply these same strategies when inequalities are involved. So before we kind of jump into the examples, I just want to take a minute to refresh your memory on absolute value inequalities, just the basic processes that we use when we're solving these guys, because it's been a while since we looked at them. So I think it's important just to get a little quick refresher in. So we should know that if A is greater than zero, so A just represents some positive real number. If we have the absolute value of X is greater than A, okay, greater than this positive real number, this gives us an or, right? A compound inequality with or. So x can be greater than a, or x can be less than the negative of a. So as a quick example, let's say we had the absolute value of x, and this is greater than seven. We should know that, again, this sets up as x is greater than seven, or x is less than negative seven. Graphically, it's really easy to figure this out. Again, I'm thinking about what values here for x have a distance from zero that is greater than seven. Well, if I start at zero and I go seven units to the right, it can't be seven itself, but it can be anything larger, right? So I just put a parenthesis at seven to say it's not included, and I shade everything to the right. Same thing goes in the other direction. If I start at zero and I go seven units to the left, I put a parenthesis at negative seven, and I just shade everything to the left like that. So this would be my solution graphically. And we also have this solution here kind of in our standard notation. And you can even use interval notation if you want. You can say from negative infinity up to, but not including, negative 7. And then the union with 7 is not included, again, out to positive infinity. Okay? So let's take a look at kind of the other scenario that happens. So if A is a positive real number, again, if A is greater than 0, if the absolute value of X is less than this positive number A, well, then x is going to be between negative a and a, right? x is greater than negative a, and it's less than a. So here we have a compound inequality with and. So let's look at this quick example here. Suppose we have the absolute value of x, and now it's less than 7, okay? So we're going to have a compound inequality with and. So basically, x is going to be greater than the negative of 7, and it's going to be less than 7 itself. Again, basically, to think about this graphically, I'm thinking about all the values whose absolute value or whose distance from zero is less than seven. So starting at zero, I could basically travel up to, but not including seven. So again, at seven, I just put a parenthesis there. And again, I could go the opposite direction. So starting at zero, I could go down to, okay, down to, but not include negative seven. So I'd put a parenthesis there as well. So that would be my graphical solution. Again, from negative seven to seven with neither of those included. And then in interval notation, I'd have negative 7, 7, again, with a parenthesis next to each. All right, so two special cases that come up that we need to be aware of. Again, if the absolute value operation, in this case, it's the absolute value of x, if we say this is less than 0, there's no solution here, okay? There's nothing I can plug in for x and take the absolute value of and say that it's going to be less than 0 because the result of this operation here is going to be 0, which is obviously not less than zero, or it's going to be some positive number, which is also never going to be less than zero. So in this situation, there is no solution. And our last special case we're going to come across, if A now is a negative number, if it's less than zero, so some negative real number, then if we have the absolute value of X is greater than this negative real number, well, then we're going to have a solution that's all real numbers, right? If I have the absolute value of X is greater than negative five, well, that's always true. Right? No matter what I plug in for x, the result of this will either be 0, which is greater than negative 5, or it'll be positive, which is also greater than negative 5. So this is always true, or you could say true for all real numbers. Okay, so now let's get to kind of the first example. And hopefully you saw the lesson where we solved more advanced absolute value equations. If you did that lesson already, this is going to be a breeze for you. We're basically using the same concepts. Okay, So suppose you had something like the absolute value of x plus 3 is greater than the absolute value of 2x minus 1. Again, when you look at these, what you want to do is you want to think about where the expressions inside of the absolute value bars are going to be 0. Okay, You're thinking about kind of the turning point. So 
where could this guy go from negative to positive or from positive to negative? Well, that can only happen when that expression is equal to zero, okay? So if I say x plus three is equal to zero and I solve that, I get that x is equal to negative three, okay? And then alternatively, if I say that two x minus one is equal to zero, I add one to each side of the equation, I get two x is equal to one, divide both sides by two, and I find that x equals one half, okay? So we're gonna use these numbers, negative three and one half, to kind of split the number line up into three intervals, okay? And I'm not gonna do it on this number line here, I'm gonna use a table, because I find it to be a little bit easier. So the numbers we were working with, again, are negative three and positive one half. So we're using that to split the number line up into three intervals. I just prefer to do this on a table because it's just easier for me to organize things. So the first interval will be from negative infinity up to but not including negative three. Okay, so that's my first interval. Then my second interval, negative three, I'm gonna include that, okay? And this is gonna be out to but not including one half. Then my third interval will be anything that includes one half or larger, okay? So from one half out to positive infinity. Now, what we're gonna do here, let's go back up. So we have the absolute value of x plus three is greater than the absolute value of two x minus one. Let's go ahead and write that real quick. So the absolute value of x plus three is greater than the absolute value of two x minus one, okay? So what we're doing here is we're looking at each interval and we're thinking about is the expression inside of the absolute value bars negative, is it zero, or is it positive? Okay, that's what I wanna consider. So for this guy right here, think about the fact that in this interval, it's going to be negative, right? I know that x plus three is equal to zero when x equals negative three. So anything less than negative three means it's going to be negative, right? So in this interval, I will replace this expression here, this absolute value of x plus three, with the negative, of x plus three, okay? So I just wrap it in parentheses and put a negative out in front to express that. Okay, for this guy right here, this two x minus one, it's also gonna be negative, right? Because two x minus one is going to be zero when x is one half. So if we're less than a half, which we are in this case, it's going to be negative. So again, I just wrap it in parentheses. So two x minus one, put a negative out in front, okay? And we'll deal with this scenario in a second. Let's just kind of move on and write everything. So in this interval here, we have from negative three up to but not including one half. So at negative three, we know that this guy would be zero, but anything larger than that means it's going to be positive, okay? So whether it's zero or some positive value, I can just take the expression itself. So I can just say it's x plus three here. And again, this is still in a format of where it's larger than negative three. So in this interval, it'll also be just x plus three, okay? Then for two x minus one, again, it's made zero when x is one half. In this interval between negative three, including negative three, up to but not including one half, it's still gonna be negative, right? Because that's less than one half. So I would say the negative of two x minus one. And then here, it could either be zero if x is a half or some positive value. So I just drop the absolute value bars and write the expression. So two x minus one, okay? So a very simple process, again, if it's zero or positive in that interval, you replace the absolute value expression with just what's inside the absolute value bars, okay? That's all you need. If it's a negative, okay, then what you wanna do is drop those absolute value bars, wrap it in parentheses, put a negative out in front, you're basically changing it into its opposite. All right, so now we've got a lot of work to do. We've gotta go through the different possibilities. So the first possibility is that both of these are negative, so let's kind of scroll down and crank that out. So I'm gonna have the negative of x plus three is greater than the negative of two x minus one. Now, if we want, we can clear the negatives by just dividing both sides by negative one. But again, because we're working with inequality and we divide it by a negative, we've got to flip that guy, okay? So this is gonna cancel and this is gonna cancel. You have x plus three now is less than two x minus one let's go ahead and subtract two x away from each side of the inequality. And let's also subtract three away from each side of the inequality. So this is gonna cancel, this is gonna cancel. We'll have x minus two x, which is negative x, and this is less than. You've got negative one minus three, which is negative four. As a final step, let's divide both sides by negative one. 
And again, we divided by a negative, so flip this guy. You're going to get that x is greater than 4. Okay, so x is greater than 4. Now, we want to compare x is greater than 4 to the interval that we're working with. The interval that we're working with specifically says that x is basically coming from negative infinity up to but not including negative 3. x is greater than 4 is not in that interval, so this solution is going to be rejected. Okay? Let me erase all this and I'll kind of write it in the column. So I'm just going to write x is greater than 4 here. And again, this is not within our interval, so we reject that solution. Okay? Now let's think about this interval here, again, where the x plus 3 is positive, and we're going to use the negative of 2x minus 1. Okay? So let's scroll down, and we're going to say that we have x plus 3 is positive, and then this guy is going to be negative, so the negative of 2x minus 1. Okay? So let's go ahead and solve this guy. I'm going to distribute this. This will be negative 2x plus 1. So if I add 2x to both sides of the inequality, and I subtract 3 away from each side of the inequality, this will cancel, this will cancel. x plus 2x is 3x. This is greater than 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Divide both sides by 3, and we get that x is greater than negative 2 thirds. Okay? So let me erase this real fast. x is greater than negative 2 thirds. Let me write that up here. So x is greater than negative 2 thirds. Okay, is that in our interval? The interval is from negative 3, including negative 3, up to but not including 1 half. Well, yeah, it is. So this is a partial solution, okay? So for right now, I'm just going to write this guy as, again, not including negative 2 thirds because it's strictly greater than, up to but not including 1 half, okay? And then we'll think about this solution, and if we have a solution there, we'll have two partial solutions we can put together as a full solution. Okay, so in this case, everything's positive. So we can just drop the absolute value bars and go with what we have. So you'd have x plus 3 is greater than 2x minus 1. Let's subtract 3 away from each side of the inequality. So that would cancel. Let me subtract 2x away from each side of the inequality. So that would cancel. x minus 2x is going to give me negative x. This is greater than negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Let's divide both sides by negative 1. So we know that this is going to flip, right? So this is going to end up being a less than. So you have x is less than positive 4, okay? So again, let me erase all this. So we say x is less than 4. Does that fit in our interval? Yeah, it does, right? Because we have from 1 half, including 1 half, out to positive infinity. x is less than 4 fits in there. You could basically say it's another partial solution. You would include 1 half, and you would go up to but not include 4. Okay, so if I take these two partial solutions and I just take the union of the two, so again, from negative two thirds, not including that, up to but not including one half, and the union with, you have one half, which is included, up to four. Okay, so this would be your solution set. And basically, when you combine the two, you can get rid of this part right here and just kind of slide this down, and that's what you're going to get, right? You're going to get from negative two thirds, not including that up to but not including 4, okay? So let me kind of drag this up to our original page, and we'll paste our solution here. Again, from negative 2 thirds, not including that, up to and not including 4. So negative 2 thirds, let's just go ahead and say that's about right here. And I'm just going to mark that and say this is negative 2 thirds. So I'd put a parenthesis there because it's not included. 4 is not included. Just shade everything in between, okay? And then we could also write this saying that x is greater than negative 2 thirds and less than 4. Okay? So this is your interval notation, this is your standard notation, and then this is graphically. So those are the solutions for, again, the absolute value of x plus 3 is greater than the absolute value of 2x minus 1. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at another example. So this guy here is going to be a little bit more complicated, but we're going to solve it using the same strategy. So we have the absolute value of x plus 5. And then plus, we have the absolute value of x minus 3. And then this is greater than 14. So the first thing we want to do is just take what's inside of the absolute value bars in each case. So this expression here, x plus 5. And this expression here, x minus 3. We just want to set those guys equal to 0 and see what the result is. So if we have x plus 5 equals 0, very simple. Subtract 5 away from each side of the equation. We get x is equal to negative 5. 
Then for the other guy, we have x minus three. So x minus three equals zero. Add three to both sides of the equation. We get x is equal to three. So again, these two numbers are gonna help me split the number line up into kind of three intervals. We're gonna have from negative infinity to negative five with negative five not being included. Then we'll have negative five to three with negative five included and three not. And then three included in anything larger. Okay, so let's set this up using a table. Again, I don't like to use the number line itself. I like a little table, it helps me organize things. So again, our numbers, I'm just gonna write them here. We had negative five and positive three. So again, from negative infinity up to, but not including negative five. And then negative five will be included here. So negative five is included and then up to, but not including three. And then three will be included and then out to positive infinity, okay? So let's rewrite our inequality. Again, if we go back up, we have the absolute value of x plus five, then plus the absolute value of x minus three. And this is greater than 14. So let's write that. So we have the absolute value of x plus five and then plus, we have the absolute value of x minus three, and this is greater than 14. Okay, so we know in this first interval, the one all the way to the left, where we're coming from negative infinity, going up to, but not including negative five, both of these guys are gonna be negative, right? This guy right here is gonna be negative because it's zero where x equals negative five, right? So we're less than negative five, so this guy's negative. This guy's also negative because it's zero when x equals three, and we're definitely less than three in this case. So we're gonna say that this guy is the negative of x plus five, and this guy is gonna be the negative of x minus three, okay? And then in this case right here, now we're from negative five including that up to three, but not including that. Well now this guy right here, this x plus five, that expression is going to be either zero or positive. So I can replace it with the expression itself. So we'll put just x plus five. And then this guy right here, this x minus three is still gonna be negative, right? Because again, it's zero when x is three, we're less than three, so it's still gonna be negative. So we put the negative of x minus three. And then this last case where we're three or anything larger, well then this x plus five is going to be positive. And then for x minus three, that could be zero or positive. So again, we just put x minus three there, okay? So again, if it's zero or positive, you just take what's inside the absolute value bars and you can write that down. Basically think about it, just drop the absolute value bars. If it's negative, well then you drop the absolute value bars, wrap it in parentheses, and then put a negative out in front. Okay, so that's all we're doing. All right, so let's go through the possibilities now. Again, this is the tedious part. So in the first case, both are negative. So I have the negative of x plus five, then plus the negative of x minus three. And you could just put the minus there instead of plus negative, doesn't really matter, then greater than 14. Okay, so I'm gonna distribute this negative to each term. I'm gonna have negative x minus five, and then minus x plus three, and this is greater than 14. Let me scroll down and get a little room going. So I know that minus x minus another x is negative two x. I know that minus five plus three is negative two. This is greater than 14. Let me go ahead and add two to both sides of the inequality. We know this will cancel. Negative two X is greater than 16. So then when I divide both sides by negative two, remember we gotta flip this. So this becomes a less than now. You'll have X is less than negative eight. Okay, so X is less than negative eight. Is that in the interval that we're working in right now? Well, yeah, we said that our current interval is anything less than negative five. Negative eight is definitely less than negative five. So we're good to go, right? This is gonna be a valid solution for us. But again, it's just part of our solution because we might have more to come, okay? So we just consider it as a partial solution for now. All right, so let me erase all this. So again, for this part, I said that X was less than negative eight. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put a check mark there so we know that we accepted that solution. All right, for the next interval, again, from negative five and including that up to but not including three, this guy's positive, this guy's negative. So let's go ahead and do that. So x plus five, again, that's positive. And then plus this x minus three, that expression is gonna be negative. So I'm gonna put minus the quantity x minus three. And before we continue, let's just go ahead and distribute this. So this would be minus x and plus three. Make that a little quicker. And then this is greater than 14. Okay, so x minus x, that's gonna drop out. So this is gone, right? So you basically have that eight is greater than 14, which is false, okay? That's never gonna be true. So nothing's gonna work in that interval. So you don't even have to put anything, you just say it doesn't work. 
All right, so the next one we're going to look at, we have from 3 and including 3 out to positive infinity. And again, both expressions are positive here. So we could just drop the absolute value bars in this case. So we just say x plus 5 plus x minus 3 is greater than 14. So x plus x is 2x. And then 5 minus 3 is 2, so plus 2. And this is greater than 14. All right, so let's subtract 2 away from each side of the inequality. And then we can cancel this. We'll have 2x is greater than 12. Let's divide both sides of the inequality by 2. We'll find that x is greater than 6. Okay, x is greater than 6. Is that in our interval? Well, yeah, this interval is from 3 out to positive infinity. x is greater than 6. That is in the interval. So we're basically good to go with that. So let's erase this. We'll say x is greater than 6. Let me put a check mark there. So basically, we would just combine these two as one statement. We would say that x is less than negative 8 or x is greater than 6. So let me just copy this real quick. We'll go back up and let me just paste this in. So again, x is less than negative 8. So find negative 8. I'm going to put a parenthesis there. I'm just going to shade everything to the left. Or also x could be greater than 6. So find 6, put a parenthesis there, shade everything to the right. Okay. In interval notation, again, I could just say from negative infinity up to but not including negative 8 and the union with anything larger than 6. Right. So in both cases, I'm using a parenthesis to show that it's not included. All right, so let's kind of change things up and look at another common type of problem that you'll see in this section. So let's suppose we saw something like the absolute value of 3 over x minus 1, and this is greater than 5. So how can we solve this type of problem? Well, one approach that we can use, we realize that this guy right here, this absolute value operation, first and foremost, there's one of them, and it's already isolated for us on one side of the inequality. So you have this absolute value operation, and this is greater than 5, okay? So for right now, don't even worry about what's inside of there. Just think about the fact that earlier in the lesson, we said if we had the absolute value of x, and this is greater than some positive real number a, this led to x being greater than a, or x is less than negative a, right? We saw this with our example. We said if the absolute value of x was greater than 7, we said x was greater than 7 or x was less than negative 7. Okay, so this should be pretty crystal clear at this point. Now, the thing is, you can do this if you have a more complex expression inside of the absolute value bars. Okay, so I can replace this x with something generic like u. We'll just say u is some algebraic expression. So it could be a rational expression like we have here. It could be a quadratic expression. It could be something more complicated than the typical linear expression that you're working with when you solve basic absolute value inequalities. So what I can do is erase this and erase the x and just put a u there, okay? So it's the same kind of concept. It just takes more time to solve it. It's just gonna be way more tedious, okay? So let's use this to set this up. So basically, I'm going to take my rational expression inside the absolute value bars, and I'm going to say 3 over x minus 1. Since I have a greater than, I'm going to say it's greater than this positive number 5. Then or, I'm going to say 3 over x minus 1, I'm going to say is less than the negative of 5. Okay, I just use this rule here. That's all I did. Okay, so let me erase this. We don't need this anymore. So basically, at this point, all we need to do is solve two rational inequalities and then kind of combine our two solution sets that we have. So I'm going to start out with this one right here. So I'm going to copy this. We're going to go down to a fresh sheet. All right, so let me just paste this in here. And I want you to recall that the very first thing you want to do when you're solving a rational inequality is get it in the format where you have a single rational expression on one side and zero on the other. Okay, so the way we're going to do that here is we're just going to subtract 5 away from each side of the inequality. And so this would cancel and become 0. So essentially I would have what? I would have 3 over x minus 1. And then we'd have minus 5, and this is greater than 0. Okay, so now I want to get a common denominator going. Let me just kind of slide this down a little bit. And what I'm going to do is just multiply this by the quantity x minus 1, and then over the quantity x minus 1. So now I'll have a common denominator. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x, and then negative 5 times negative 1 is going to be plus 5, okay? So kind of continuing, now I have a common denominator, so I can just combine the numerators. So we have 3 
and then let me make this more clear. This is negative 5x, and I'll just put a plus here. So we have 3 plus 5, which is 8. Okay, you have 8, and you have your negative 5x. So let me write negative 5x plus 8 as the numerator, and this is over the common denominator, which is x minus 1, and this is greater than 0. Okay, so now we've accomplished kind of the first task. We have a single rational expression on the left side in this case, and we have zero on the other. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is find out where the critical values are. Or some people call them endpoints or boundaries, whatever you want to call them. Okay, I'll just say critical values. So that is going to occur where the numerator is going to be zero and where the denominator is going to be zero. I would take this numerator, which in this case is negative 5x plus 8, and I would set it equal to zero. So that's one of them. Then I would take the denominator, which is x minus 1, set that equal to 0. So both of those guys, when we solve that, the two solutions there are the critical values, or again, endpoints. So let me add 1 to both sides of this equation. That gives me x equals 1. So that's one of those guys. Let me subtract 8 away from each side of this equation. This is going to cancel. You'll have negative 5x is equal to negative 8. Divide both sides by negative 5 and you're going to get that x is equal to 8 fifths. So these are our two critical values. So we're going to use that to split the number line up into three intervals. So basically you'll have from negative infinity up to but not including 1, and then between 1 and 8 fifths, right, neither is included, and then anything greater than 8 fifths. Okay, so those are the three intervals you're going to have. You're going to pick a number in each interval, okay? You're going to test that number in the original inequality, you're going to see if it satisfies it. If it does, that interval works. It's part of your solution set. If it doesn't, it gets rejected. It's not part of the solution set. So you can use a table for this if you want, or you could do a number line. For these, I prefer to actually use a number line, so let's do that. All right, so the critical values, again, we have 1 and we have 8 fifths. So 1 is right here, so let me just draw a nice little vertical line. And it won't be perfect, but we'll put that in there. And then 8 fifths is 1.6. Now, I've kind of divvied the number line up in a different way. You'll see that the notches here are separated by 0.5 or a half. So from 1, we go to 1.5, or you could say 3 halves. So 8 fifths, again, is 1.6. If this is 1.5, 1.6, let's just say it's about right there. Let's say this is 8 fifths, okay? So let's go ahead and put another kind of vertical line there. We're going to divvy up the number line and just basically say that. Let me kind of make that a little better. We'll say that this is interval A, basically anything less than 1. Anything between 1 and 8 fifths, we'll call that interval B. And anything larger than 8 fifths, we'll call that interval C. So we'll have A, B, and C. So the original inequality was 3 over x minus 1 is greater than 5. So just take values in each interval, check them, see if they work. Again, if they do, it's part of your solution. If they don't, it's not part of your solution. Very, very easy. Just a very tedious process. So from interval A, I'm going to pick 0, plug that in there. You would have 3 over, 0 minus 1 is negative 1, so 3 over negative 1. Is that greater than 5? No. This would end up being negative 3. Negative 3 is certainly not greater than 5, so this is false, right? In interval A, nothing's going to work. So for interval B, again, I'm between 1 and 8 fifths, or between 1 and 1 1.6. I think the easiest number to use there would be 1.5. So let's go ahead and plug in a 1.5 there. 1.5 minus 1 would be 0.5. So you would have 3 divided by 0.5 is greater than 5. You know if you divide 3 by 0.5, it's the same thing as multiplying 3 by 2, right? If you divide 3 by a half, you could say, when you crank that out, you get 3 times 2, which is going to be 6. Is 6 larger than 5? Yes, it is. So this is true. All right, for the last one, let's take a look at something in interval C. I'm going to pick 2. So 2 minus 1 is 1. 3 over 1 is 3. So you basically have that 3 is greater than 5, which is false. Okay? Let me write that a little better. So false. Okay, so only numbers or only values in interval B are going to satisfy this inequality. It's a strict inequality, so the endpoints we don't even need to consider. Them, okay, they won't work. They will be excluded. So the solution for this part is going to be anything larger than 1 up to but not including 8 fifths. So let's just copy this. And we'll go back up. And again, this is just going to be a partial solution. So this is for this one. And we could really write that 
x is greater than one and it's less than eight fifths. Okay, so this is just a partial solution. We're gonna work on this guy now and see what else we can find. So let's copy this and let's go down. All right, so let's paste this other scenario here. We have three over x minus one and this is less than negative five. So again, I want to get one rational expression on one side or one fraction and zero on the other. So same process as last time. So I'm gonna add five to both sides of the inequality. I'm gonna have that three over x minus one, then plus five is less than zero. I'm gonna get a common denominator. So let me again move this down. So I'm gonna multiply this by x minus one over x minus one. And this is gonna to lead to three over x minus one plus you have five times x, which is five x. And then minus five times one is five. And this is over x minus one. Okay, then this is less than zero. So let me erase this. And we don't need this for right now. We'll write it again when we need it. So let me just drag this up. And we make that three a little bit better. Okay, so now we're just going to kind of combine the numerators. We have a common denominator. So we'd have five x and then three minus five is negative two. So minus two. This is over x minus one, and this is less than zero. Okay, so at this point, again, I wanna take my numerator, set it equal to zero, take my denominator, set it equal to zero. That will give me the two endpoints or critical values or boundaries, okay? So we would have five x minus two is equal to zero, add two to both sides of the equation. I'm gonna get that five x is equal to two. We would divide both sides by five and find that x is equal to two fifths, okay? So that's one critical value. And then x minus one, we know if we set that equal to zero, we would get that x equals one, right? We solved that earlier. Okay, so let's go up. And again, the two critical values, we have one and then we have two fifths. Okay, so one is right here. Let's just put a vertical line there. Two fifths in decimal form is 0.4. So I have a notch for one half. 0.4 would be just a little bit less. So let's just say it's right there. So this is going to be my two fifths. So let me just put a vertical line there. Okay, so we have interval A, interval B, and interval C. Again, interval A in this case is going to be anything that's less than two fifths. Interval B will be between two fifths and one, and interval C will be anything larger than one. So the inequality we're working with is three over X minus one, and that's less than negative five. So let's choose a number from interval A. Again, I'm gonna choose zero because it's easy to work with. So zero minus one is negative one. You would have that three over negative one is less than negative five. That's gonna be false, right? This would be negative three is less than negative five. Negative three is a smaller negative value than negative five. So it's actually a larger number, right? So this is gonna be false. Okay, what about for interval B? Well, it's kind of a tight window, but between two fifths and one, you can use one half. So if I do 0.5 there, I'm gonna have 0.5 minus one, which is negative 0.5. So I would have three over a negative 0.5, and this is less than negative five. Of course, if I divide three by negative 0.5, it's like multiplying three times negative two. So this would basically be negative six here. Negative six is a larger negative than negative five, so it is less than negative five. So this is true. Then for interval C, again, I'm just gonna choose two. Nice and easy to work with. Two minus one gives me one. So I would have that three is less than negative five, which is obviously false, okay? So my solution here is gonna be for interval B, anything between two fifths and one. So between two fifths and one. Okay, so for this guy, my solution is again, between two fifths and one. So now it's gonna be the union of these two solution sets. So let me erase this. I don't need any of this anymore because I'm thinking about the problem as a whole now. So I'm just gonna start with this one. So I'm gonna say between two fifths and one, again, neither is included. And the union with this guy, which is between one and eight fifths, neither is included, okay? Now you could also write this with our kind of standard way using that or. We can say that x is gonna be greater than two fifths and less than one. And then, or you have this solution. So you have that x is gonna be greater than one and less than eight fifths, okay? So let's copy this and go to the number line. We'll make a nice little graph to finish this off. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just make a little notch for two fifths. So again, that's 0.4. 
So I'm going to put it right there and just say this is two fifths. Again, this value here for this notch is one half. So two fifths would be less than that. Then for eight fifths, I'm going to say again, that's 1.6 is a decimal. So three halves is 1.5. So it's going to be a little bit more than that. So let's say it's right there. So this will be my eight fifths. Okay. So basically two fifths is not included. So I'll put a parenthesis there. We're going to go up to, but not including one. So I'll put a parenthesis there. But then again, at one, I'm not including it. So I'm going to put another parenthesis facing the opposite direction. And then I'm going to shade up to, but not including eight fifths. And I'll put a parenthesis there. So that's a nice little graph you can make. And in this case, it might be a little easier to use open circles. So what we might want to do to make the graph a little cleaner is put an open circle here at two fifths, put an open circle here at one and put an open circle here at eight fifths. OK, so you could do it this way. It's a little cleaner or the other way using the kind of parenthesis for each. It doesn't matter either way. It's the same solution. So we see that X is greater than two fifths and less than one or X is greater than one and less than eight fifths.